All right. Well, welcome to today's program called Get Your Local Business on Google Search and Maps. So Grow with Google helps people across the United States grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free tools such as this one that you're going to hear about today, free training and events. My name is Sharon. I'm a librarian at the Plano Public Library. And with me today is Perla. Perla, would you like to say hi? Hello. Hello. All right. So today you're going to learn how to set up, verify, and manage your business proof profile on Google using a free tool called Google My Business. And this is open for all local businesses um, that have storefront openings, or if you're a nonprofit today with us today, it will work for you as well. It also works for those people who perhaps operate out of their homes, as long as you're meeting with a customer, either at their location, their home, or you're meeting them in another location, this tool will work for you as well. So we're going to get started by watching a video about a business um, who has been using this tool and how it helped them. There's the possibility it may freeze up, so please um, listen on as it continues. My name is Jamie Hahn. I'm the fourth generation of Fadley Seafood here in Baltimore. We're one of the oldest seafood companies in the country. Not many places can say that they've been in a family for 126 years. Bill and Nancy are my parents. My mom is the queen of crab cakes. We make anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 crab cakes a day out of the best ingredients I could possibly get. It's nice to have some place that you can go. It's friendly and there's a lot of love. This is my son, Will, fifth generation of Fadelands. When people search for us, it's important for them to be able to find us. And Google's the perfect place to do that. It's neat that you can see how many people hit you on a certain day. Having that information allows us to be able to say, you know, look, we may have a crowd. And that's, that's huge. Right now, it's oyster season. We have a wonderful oyster stew. We have wonderful fried oysters. We have this beautiful raw bar. Google can help us tell our customers what's in season. It's key to our survival. Knowing that Fadley's will still be here warms my heart. <laughs> it's not a dunce cap. It's a crab hack. <laughs> On a dance. On a dance. <laughs> right. Okay, so today's um, program will be divided into three sections. First, we'll discuss exactly what is a business profile on Google. Secondly, we're going to take a tour of Google My Bus Business and show you all the features that are available for you to connect with your customers across Google Search and Maps. And lastly, we'll walk you through how to claim your free profile and answer any questions that you have about Google My Business. I do want to mention here also that you may have noticed you've been muted um, when you entered the program. However, there is a chat feature located on the bottom of your screen and feel free to ask questions throughout the program here and we'll do our best to answer them. Okay. So this is a picture, a snapshot of, if you will, of a Google search and um, the results. So as you can see on this um, screenshot that somebody was searching for an apothecary near me and it brought out the usual list of results, but over to the right here, um, you'll see that there is a section that kind of pops out at you. Um, to the right, it has a, a photo, it has this, the business name, as well as a great number of features right there. So they have access to your profile before even clicking on another link. 
So creating a business profile allows you to edit the information on Google displays quickly and your details will be up to date and consistent across search and maps. Creating a business profile won't guarantee that your business will appear first in the search results, but it will help. And as you can see, um, being able to update your information is rather critical because up to, to date, business profiles are 2.7 times more likely to be considered reputable. Appearing on Google Maps is important for your business. People visit one and a half billion destinations every month related to their Google searches and people are searching locally. There are billions of local searches made monthly and more than 30% of those searches are through mobile devices. Um, and so businesses, as we said, with storefronts that are open to customers and those businesses that meet with customers in local service areas can appear on Google Maps. Google uses different signals to determine what results will be shown when a person go, you know, does a search. They use factors like relevancy, distance, and prominence. So relevancy is really how well the business profile matches the terms used in a given search. If your profile's detailed and up to date, well, people are more likely, Google's more likely to have it show up on that um, list of relevant searches. Distance is just exactly what it sounds like. How close is the business to that searcher? Um, and prominence is gauged by how well known the business is. So it's really based on all, all bits of information that Google can find across the web. Fortunately, um, Google My Business is available and works with all devices. So whether you're a potential customer or yourself want to access your business and business profile, they'll be able to do that through a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, um, their cell phone. And that's important because of the rise in the cell phone use. Again, they're just, smartphones are indispensable shopping tools and people rely on them. And so here you have a tool that they can access easily from any device. So we're gonna take a tour of Google My Business and see what exactly you can do with it. This is the anatomy of a business profile on Google. It looked a lot like that snapshot you saw in the search results page we saw a little while ago. And of course, here's a view via the cell phone. Notice that um, shoppers will be able to um, access your address, phone number, contact information, hours, all that pertinent information just quickly. You'll see at the top that they can, and you as a business owner, can insert a picture or pictures and also videos. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. You'll see, of course, the title of your business and notice the star reviews. Um, that's pretty important. I think that a lot of um, customers are looking at those reviews before they go to a business or purchase an item. They're really looking at that. So know that that's part of the profile. You can tell also the category of that business. Is it a bakery? Is it a pharmacy? Is it a retail store? Um, and that you will be selecting when you um, set up your business profile. Notice that this one is open, tells you right there. Um, and you have some quick access, uh, or the customers do, an overview of your business, updates, which we'll also talk about more. They have quick access to reviews, and an about page. Notice the quick links. They can quickly call you, get directions, save your business for future reference, or access your website. 
Um, take a peek at the description. You have the uh, opportunity to um, put in a description of up to 750 characters stating maybe what your business is all about and perhaps what makes it unique. And again, at the bottom, you'll see the address for your business as well as the map. So this is a screenshot of the Google My Business dashboard as viewed on a computer. And what we're gonna do today is look at some of those features you might see listed um, on the far left. We'll talk about posts, info, insights, reviews, messaging, photos, products, website, and users, as well as some of these other features that you see um, that will all be discussed today. Um, we're also going to show you how to set up your Google My Business and access the dashboard. If, we're, if you want to follow along by opening another tab or you have another device or whichever way, you can go ahead and um, just enter google.com slash business and um, begin and follow along as we go through the program. You can also um, make updates with a mobile app. So this tool, as we mentioned before, it is available for your, um, your cell phone, whether it's an Apple or Android device, it works well with both. That way you as a business owner can easily update if your hour, you know, whether it's hours or days, or um, you can have access to updating that, that information in real time right away. Um, and so that's a, another advantage of using this tool. All right. So what can you do with Google My Business? Let's talk about those things. So you can easily confirm your business hours. 40% or 40 of local business searches want to find hours of operation. And if you're like me and you look those um, businesses up, sometimes their hours aren't up to date. It's really um, disconcerting. And so it's to your advantage to make sure that your hours are always up to date. You can see um, that that's easy to do on your mobile device. Of course, you can also do it from your, your laptop or your computer. Um, this is really handy um, if you want to say, increase your hours during the holidays. And that is something that you'll be able to do in advance. But if for some reason you just totally forgot, you can do this at the drop of a hat. You could just pull up your profile and increase, say tomorrow's hours, you're staying open later. You can do it very quickly. Um, so again, that's really important because searchers want to know if you're open and open now. Um, and, and as I said before, you can preset those uh, special hours. You know, during the pandemic, it was, and I guess that's still ongoing, but when hours are have varied greatly, it was nice to be able to continuously update your hours and days. So adding business photos can help your pro business profile really stand out or pop out when they're performing a Google search. Um, and notice that, or maybe I should share that photos can be added by both customers and business owners. Um, that's an interesting tidbit of information there that 90% of customers more likely are more likely to visit a business that has photos on their search results page. Um, I think an advantage to this one that we see um, on, in this picture is uh, the storefront. And obviously it's in the middle of a line of businesses. And if you're a first time shopper, uh, how nice it is to have a visual of what the storefront looks like. So when you're busy looking for a parking place, you have an idea of how close or how far away you are. Um, so businesses can also add a virtual tour 
to their, um, their profile right here. Now, this connects you to a site with information about hiring a Street View trusted pro. So that's a photographer that's officially certified by Google and they take a 3D tour of your business and add that to your profile. That is a little bit of an extra expense, but it is a cool feature, especially depending on what type of business you have, or maybe that you've remodeled and you're really excited about showing um, your new space to your customers. Another cool feature about adding photos um, which is available only on the mobile app right now, is that you can go ahead and add a description. So you can um, write something up to 80 characters. So if you're trying to draw attention to a certain product or a certain space, you can do that. Um, also, you can see that when you do add your photo or photos, you do, um, you do have some filters to work with, much like your normal um, cell phone camera. Now, if you wanted to, you could in, insert a video. Like we said, it's about a 30 second video. That part is totally free. And if you're looking for ideas like why, why would I want to insert a video? Well, it could be that you've been anticipating the arrival of a certain product. You may have been advertising it. Um, and so you could actually take a video uh, of you opening that product from its package, and that would be pretty exciting. Or you can show how a product is made. Um, we saw that seafood business video, um, and it was kind of interesting to see those crab cakes being made. So that's an example of something you could um, show a video of. You could also give your own tour of your space in 30 seconds. Um, again, especially if you're really excited about this uh, new remodeling that you've done or you've increased your space and you wanna share that. Or another idea would be to highlight one of your employees, of course, with their permission, you could do a short video on that employee of the month or whoever you wanted to spotlight. So when you um, create your business profile, you also have the opportunity, well, you will be able to create a short name. Okay, so on this example you see in front of you, that middle image, um, we're looking at a business called Coffee X. So their short name they selected is, as you can see on the bottom highlighted in green, is at Coffee X. That is their short name. So it, this makes it really easy for you know, people to remember when they're doing a search because if they didn't save it and they wait, I wanna go to Coffee X, they can just put that in their search bar, Coffee X or at Coffee X and that business will pop up. Um, the benefit to this short name is that it makes it really easy to promote your profile, both online via social media, or in person, because it's really easy to print up on a flyer or on your receipts or business cards, a very short name. So um, when I say short name, um, I just want to let you know that your short name can actually be up to 32 characters. So there's the opportunity to be a little creative there. And it's also something that you can update you can change it. So if for some reason you decide what you first picked isn't working, you can change that. The short name also creates a shorter URL. And when that happens, you'll see the format um, and we see part of that in the um, image on, well, a couple of the different images, but particularly on the left, your URL becomes g dot page slash your short name. And that's your URL. So that's your, your, your format for your URL. And later on, we'll talk about the reviews, which you see that link also in the first image where it says g dot page slash 
Coffee X slash review. So again, so yeah, that short name comes into play, not only in the name itself, but it's the UR, in the URL and um, as a way to also get reviews. So let's see, we are going to continue. Once your business profile is verified, and we're gonna be going through that uh, verification process, um, you have the option to read and respond to reviews about your business published on Google. So again, I think those reviews are very important. They're popular with a large percentage of the population. Um, and so you really do want reviews. Of course, you want really good reviews. So one of the number one questions is, well, what about negative reviews? Can I remove those? Well, the answer is no, not really. Not unless it's violating a content policy, you know, that it's rude, it's crude. Um, there is a line to be drawn. So if it's simply a bad review, what Google does advise business owners, they encourage them to respond. It gives you an opportunity to explain a policy or maybe to apologize for something that went wrong. And so they do encourage you to respond that way. Um, if you do find that the content um, is, violates a policy, then you can um, go into your profile, click on that review, and you can click on the three dots listed next to that review, and you can flag it. Once you flag that one, Google takes a look at it, and if they agree that it violated the content policy, then they'll remove it. So um, Google strongly encourages you to respond, not only just to negative reviews, but just to respond to positive reviews. You want those you know, customers who have said good things about you, you wanna thank them for that. So you can see in the image on um, this slide that yeah, thanks for the review, Brian. We really appreciate it. Hope to see you in the store soon. And um, that's going to hopefully put a smile on Brian's face. So um, it's important to reply really to everybody. And we'll discuss in a little bit how you can share that responsibility. So we talked briefly about reviews um, and here is the uh, um, look at your, your desktop view here on how you can get more reviews using your short link. So you can easily share it and um, you can see where the green outlined box is. You can share your short link URL with that slash review ending note that notice that there is not an S on it. It's just G dot page slash your short name slash review. And that way you can um, easily send it to your customers, post it and um, ask for more reviews. Another useful feature in Google My Business is the post feature. So here you can uh, you know, post updates with your business directly on your business profile. Um, and you can do that through the app or your web dashboard. Um, and so this is really a good way of promoting maybe reservations if you're a restaurant, promoting maybe a newsletter, um, a new product, a new service, um, the reopening uh, or the opening of another location. So those types of posts, and we're gonna take a closer look at those. So here are four post examples that you might like to use depending upon what type of business you have. There's the what's new post, a product post, the offer, and the event post. So let's begin with the one on the left, the what's new post. 
Here's where you can um, make new announcements that provide general information about your business. You can include a photo and that will really draw their attention just a bit more. Um, it can also, again, be a video of 30 seconds or less. Notice that there is a link in this example. The learn more button is a link to get more information about this new location that's um, gonna be opened. And there is a call to action button. So see that they can right away click on the EC schedule and book a, an appointment right then and there. So very good for promoting an, either a new location or um, product or service. Um, on the, well, on the next um, type of post, the product post, this is one that you might want to use just to signal out a product that is maybe new to your business. And so you wanna share it with others. It is also a way to promote um, excess merchandise. You know, so if you're trying to deplete your inventory a little, you might want to highlight a product um, and that way um, by coincidence, it could be on sale. So another way to move your merchandise. Again, you can include a picture, the title, a short description, and notice that once again, there's a call to action button that they can buy that product with a click of a button. The next post uh, example is the offer post, and that post provides promotional sales or offers from your business. Um, in this example, we see that there's a 25% off sale going on on their winter gift bundle. Uh, notice that they have the opportunity to place the dates that that promotion is available. You, you have the opportunity to, um, to include a link which automatically will incorporate that 25% off that promotion that you're trying to offer. So in the last type of post, it's the ex event post. So in this example, um, you see that Honest Soul Yoga's hours of operation are going to change because they're having their second annual 24 hour yoga thon. So this post, again, you can um, include an image and uh, a title, a description, a link, also a call to action button where they can go ahead and schedule or book an appointment. But notice that they have their dates listed as well. So this particular event is running from November 15th to November 16th. So um, that's important for the event as you're entering it. Um, with these four types of posts, the first three that you see, the what's new product and offer, those posts run for a week. The event one will run for the length of your event. So just interesting to know that. So another new feature um, is the ability to book appointments from the business profile. We just touched upon that as that they could do that in a post. Um, but it's this is an important feature because again, one out of two customers, they wanna schedule an appointment when they're searching for that particular business, whether it's an office, uh, say dentist's office, nail salon, or even um, a restaurant you're wanting to book a, a reservation. So Google works with a third party scheduling software provider um, that they um, enable through Google search maps and reserve. Um, and what they do is that they use third party integrations like Full Slate or MindBody, Appointee, Booksy, Schedulicity, um, and these other third party integrations to make it easy for your customers to go ahead and book those appointments or reservations 
right from their car seat or wherever they're sitting. Now there is a follow and welcome um, offer. So your profile includes the follow feature so people can follow you um, and keep up with the updates that you have and the offers that you're promoting and photos that you just uploaded. Um, and they can access those through Google, um, Google Maps. Um, you have the option of giving them a welcome offer. So you can see in this example that there's a 10% off tune-up for anyone who decides to follow Downtown Bikes. Um, and so this is something, uh, this is a good way of rewarding those customers who like your business and say good things about you. Um, and they can, um, it's nice to give them a little gift, opens up just better communications and um, channels between business owners and their customers. Um, so this you can um, offer also, you can set it up through your app, no problem. So people can choose to follow you anonymously. Um, and so just, uh, be aware that you you may have some anonymous followers, but that's that's all good. You can use messaging too. You can set that up in your Google My Business app. That way, customers can um, contact you in real time. Again, there is a certain percentage of the population that they hesitate to pick up a phone and call you, but they don't think twice, you know, about texting you or chatting with you and asking you that question. So it's another way of connecting with um, customers of all types or future customers. Um, and then you can respond to them right away. Um, to turn on messaging, you can do that through the app um, and you can see uh, in this on this slide, how just to um, click on the customers and um, you can enable or turn on that feature. And once you do do that, you want to commit to it um, because you um, are setting up something that is a quickly you know responding scenario. It is something that you'll be able to share with others. So if you're afraid of being available during all of your open hours, I know that this is something that you can share with your other employees, set a schedule, or everybody can have open. So um, what it does do, though, is commit you to answering promptly. In fact, if you don't answer a message within 24 hours, Google is most likely going to deactivate your messaging feature. So just please be aware of that. So Google My Business includes the opportunity for you to create a free website. If you don't have one, it just couldn't be easier to get one. So what they do is simply, um, if you click from the app, you can see um, that you're just gonna click on that website. You're gonna select your theme and you'll, you'll wanna incorporate maybe one of your own pictures. Um, and then you're going to click publish. What they do is they pull all of that information you've already entered when you created your profile, such as your business name and your hours and your location, and they just pull it all in and you now have a website. Um, so you'll also see this, we'll talk about it a little bit more or just restate it again when we walk through the process of setting up your profile. But uh, so if you don't have a website yet, here's a good opportunity and easy one to create one.
Now, I talked a little bit about some of the responsibilities um, should you choose to um, share the responsibilities of keeping your profile updated or you wanting to use the message feature that you can share this with others. And um, so here is a quick glance at how you would do that uh, via your phone. You're going to click on manage users and then you'll have the ability to um, click on the little plus icon in the top right of the app um, and select your staff member by their email address. And then you'll determine what role they're going to play because there's different levels of responsibility depending upon the role you assign. So there is the owner, there's also the co-owner and they basically have um, access to absolutely everything. You as the owner um, have the unique uh, course position of um, either deleting the profile or transferring ownership. So if you assign somebody the manager level, they have almost the same access. They cannot remove your profile or delete it. They cannot transfer ownership, but they do have access to pretty much everything else, adding updates, um, pictures, text messaging, if you uh, choose. So um, that's an option. And then you have also a site manager who doesn't have quite as much access so, um, so here is just a pre brief glance at how you can distribute that workload to others. So once you select your staff member and you're doing this via email and their position, you send that email. Once they agree to it, then they have now um, utilize that position and have access to those. Um, features that you want them to help you with. So um, insights. Insights, this is a great feature that allows you um, profiles and access reports. So what Google does is keeps track of how searchers find you and how do they interact when they they get to your profile. Are they calling you? Are they requesting directions, checking your hours? Are they visiting your website or not really? Um, you'll also be able to see where they're coming from. So there's sort of a heat map, which um, tells you how far they're traveling to get to your business. You'll be able to view um, what days you're getting the most activity. And so this is really valuable information because when you view um, the visits, the workload, you can then turn around and have a better idea of how to staff your business. You know, slower days, you may not want as many staff members working. Um, busier days, maybe you wanna look at increasing your hours um, or on your slower days, maybe want to offer a promotion, a discount of some time. So being able to access these insights is really, really beneficial for you. Um, also, you can view those results, you know, on a weekly basis, you know, look at a week at a glance or a month or a quarter. Um, and that way you can uh, better change your hours or your days or your promotions or your staffing. So a very nice feature. Business profiles on Google My Business can only be created for businesses, like I said, that have a physical location that customers can visit or that travel to visit customers where they are. So the general rule is, is that a business must make in-person contact with customers. So naturally, like I mentioned before, if you have a business that they actually go to, you open your doors, they come in, they shop, or it's a restaurant, you open your doors. 
Um, but again, it could be that you're a, a, a service, you're an electric, electrical, um, you have a business in um, a, electrical engineering, you go do services at people's homes. Or it could be that you have an in-home um, business, but you don't actually have people come shop at your house. What you do is you uh, go to them to deliver the products or you meet them somewhere. Um, in that case, you can create a business profile. So there are some exceptions like um, ATMs do appear back when there were video rentals. I don't think there are, well, I guess Redbox kind of considered. Um, those are some exceptions that do appear. There are also businesses, which in Texas is a little harder to um, picture, but like ice skating rinks. Um, as long as they have a sign that's posted year round, an ice skating rink can appear, can create a business profile um, because that signage is permanent, even though they may not be open the entire year. So uh, some ineligible, ineligible businesses in case you're interested are like um, vacation homes or uh, model homes, rentals. Those cannot get a profile. They're not always available. However, the office to say an apartment complex, they can, they're permanently there. So um, also if you're a nonprofit and you meet at a, a, a business location that is not yours, that's not gonna work either because um, it needs to be a location that that is yours. Okay, so let's take a peek at how to access Google My Business. Um, in case again, if you want to follow along now, feel free to do that. If not, we're taking it, we're walking the walk right now and it'll look super familiar when you're doing this later on, perhaps tonight or on another day. So to get started, you're simply going to go to google.com slash business and you're going to hit sign in. Um, you can see that in the top right hand corner. If you're new to Google My Business, then you're going to click the blue manage now button. Okay, before using many of Google's products, you're gonna to need to set up a free Google account. So if you don't have one yet, know that it is free um, and it's a simple process. You will have to provide an email. It does address, it does not have to be Gmail if that's what you're concerned with. Um, there is, you'll simply be able to um, uh, transfer that you're gonna choose an option for accounts.google.com slash sign up. It'll automatically route you there and you'll be able to sign in that way. So you'll need a username and password. And um, then you'll see that you have access to your calendar and various docs that are all connected in your Google account. Um, we have a question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see if it ran. Um, let's try reading it. Nancy is asking. Is that is that a lot of echo? So the question is, if I have a home-based service business. For example, if I meet with clients at their office and don't want to list my home address, is that acceptable? Okay, I'm sorry. I think I'll probably, can we um, maybe look at that at the end? And because I had a hard time hearing the question, but we will, we will um, yeah, we will look at it at the end since we're having some difficulties here with the audio. I apologize for that. Okay. Melin is saying she can read the question if we'd like. Okay. All right. Melin, would you like to try to read that question? 
Sure. It says if I have a home-based home service, service business, business uh, uh, example, I meet I with clients at their office, office and don't want to list my home address, is that acceptable? Oh, right. So if you have at home office, that's one reason. Yes, good question. So at home businesses or if your office is at your home and and you're um, you're going to other clients to meet with them elsewhere. Um, yes, that's fine. So we're going to see in the setup that um, if you have a business with a storefront, you're going to include the ad address. It's going to become public knowledge. But if you don't, you don't check off, you're going to not include your address, basically. Google will have a copy of your office or your home address, but it won't be made public on Google search and maps. So I think you'll see that when we walk the walk here in just a minute. Good question. Okay, so once um, you uh, begin the process of signing in uh, after step one, we go to step two, and that is that you're gonna begin typing in your business name as you want it to appear on Google. So as you begin typing your business name, there is the possibility that a drop down menu is gonna pop up and you're gonna see your business name. And cool, you can click on that. Um, if it doesn't appear, just continue typing them in. This is perhaps the first time. Um, and so um, you will just enter that here. All right. On the next page, you're just going to confirm the spelling of your name. Um, I know that it's just a necessary step. Um, you guys probably deal with social media quite often. And there are lots of typos out there. So simply verify that the spelling is exactly the way that you want it to appear. And then you're going to click next. Then you're going to be asked to select a business category. Now, this is a, um, a field that you must select. Um, there will be a drop down menu. So you're going to start by thinking of a category that you'd like to use um, and type the first few letters. Like if you're a bakery in this example, you got as far as B-A-K and bakery popped up. Um, and so you, you'll click on it. That's perfect. Um, some businesses, it's not quite as clear. So what you're going to do is pick the one type, the one category that best fits, that's closest, and then you'll be able to perfect that later on in the process. But um, it's not a field, this is not a field that you can just enter your own terms, you're going to select. Um, also, there's the possibility that your, you, your business fits multiple categories. Um, and so what you're going to do is maybe pick the one that you think is the most popular or the best fit. And then later on, you'll go and um, add the other categories so that they pull up on those um, searches as well. When you're done finding your category or your closest category, you're going to click next. Okay, here's the question that we were just looking at um, or discussing a little while ago. Um, and that is, um, do you have a location customers visit? So, so if you do, here's where you click yes, because you're gonna be entering that pertinent address information that your customers need. If you don't, again, like you, your, your office is at home, people don't come visit you or you have an at home business or you're that service provider, you go, you're a plumber, you go to their houses, you're gonna select no because you, you don't want people showing up at your front door. So, um, so if you have a storefront, click yes. If not, click no, and then we'll go to next. So if you did click yes, you do have doors that people can walk through. You're going to go ahead and enter the complete address. Um, the 
including the suite numbers um, and the floor. Um, you're not going to be able to say anything about, oh, it's at the corner of such and such and such and such. You're not going to be able to say, oh, it's near this landmark. It's simply your street address um, as, as, as exactly as you can. PO boxes are not considered um, accurate physical locations, so that's not going to work for you. If you clicked no, for those of you who work out of your home, um, you'll, be, you'll be asked to enter the areas you serve. And so for that, you're going to be entering cities or postal codes, um, neighborhoods, districts, things like that. It's no, it's no longer like a mile radius of some sort. Um, and that's um, so. Um, this next question, do you also serve customers outside this location? So um, for those of you who selected um, that you're going to be delivering or including a service in that area, um, just again, it's gonna be by city or postal code or district. It's not um, the mileage type area. Um, but even for those with storefronts, perhaps you offer delivery service or of some sort, um, you're going to go ahead and click yes if it's outside your building and um, and you'll be selecting those areas. Next, you're going to enter um, the you have the, the option of including a phone number and a website. So providing your current info will help um, customers get in touch with you. Um, and learn more about your business. Um, you do have customers who still like to pick up the phone. So this um, is beneficial for you as long as you have somebody manning a phone. Um, also, if you have a website, here's where you're going to, by default, the, the little circle that says get a free website is gonna be filled out. Um, and so, again, if you are just filling out your profile and you don't have a website yet, here's the opportunity. Just go ahead and click that little circle that says, well, it's already going to be highlighted by default. Um, and so you're going to automatically create that website as we continue. If you already have a URL that's established, you're going to do as in this example, you're simply going to select that top field and type in your current URL. And then you're going to click next. Okay. So we're almost done, we're getting there. Here you're just simply verifying your connection to the business um, to publish it on your business profile. So they're just restating, here's what you select. Um, and as long as that looks good to you, you're gonna click finish. If not, you'll go back and redo what you want redone. Now verifying your business. Okay, this is a very important business. You're uh, a step to um, getting your business profile set up. You're gonna verify that you are a legitimate business. Um, and to do that, you're gonna be requesting a postcard be mailed to your business address. Um, and so this, um, is an important step. You're going to receive a postcard. Um, generally, as they say in the example above, that it could take up to five days. Um, depending upon when you mail this, it could take as long as 14. Um, so it, they just want you to be aware of that. When you get that card, you're, it's going to be in an oversized envelope but you're still gonna want to share how important that is um, with any employees that pick up mail for you um, because that postcard contains a code that you're gonna need to enter to complete the process. 
Um, there are exceptions. You can notice that on the bottom, there's a little question mark with more options that if for some reason this postcard um, is not going to work for you, you can state a case for that. Uh, there are very rare occasions where you can choose the option to receive a phone call. And when you do, you're going to need to have um, a piece of paper handy because it's going to be an automated call that's going to give you that six digit code right then and there. Okay, so your postcard is on the way once you stick it in the mail. And um, once it arrives, you'll be able to verify your account. You're going to sign in, you're going to enter that code, um, and you are going to click submit. So these were just the steps. Once you get that code, you're going to create and verify your business profile. You're going to update any information that may have changed between the time that you set up your profile and now. Um, and then you're going to learn more about it. So this tool, Google wants you to be aware that it's not like a did it and I'm done um, tool. It's one that you're going to be revisiting um, and updating. Um, well, uh, hopefully for a good long time with your business, you know, to, to promote it and to engage with your customers and increase that. So at this time, um, also Google wanted you to be aware that there are other tools and they're listed there on the screen above you just to share with those you know that there are free tools like this for teachers, students, local businesses, job seekers, and developers. So, um, so I want to thank you for listening to this program, but I also want to take time to see if you have any questions. And um, maybe if you do, um, you could put them in the chat and perhaps Milan could share those questions. Okay, and if there are not, or while you ponder that, I wanted to let you know that the Plano Public Library does have some more business-related classes coming up soon in August. And if you take a glance here, you do see that we have resources for small businesses that's being presented by SCORE. Um, also, how to start an online business. Um, that's coming up on August 18th. And um, Grow Your Business with Adobe Creative Cloud is being presented on August 27th. All three of those also at 1 p.m. And along with that, if you care to um, take a peek at planolibrary.org, we also have a video library. So these are recordings of other business related classes that you might be interested in viewing um, at your own, in during your own free time, whether it be the evening um, or mornings, whatever fits into your, um, your agenda or your schedule for the day. So um, there are so many here, I'm not gonna read through all of them, but do take a peek at those. You don't need a card, a library card to look at those recordings um, and it may help your business. So, one more quick question. Does anybody have a last minute question? If not, I'd like to say thank you for attending this program and we look forward to seeing you again at another one of our Plano Library programs or in person. Thank you for coming.